All right, I really think you're going to enjoy Chapter 7. As a matter of fact, you might even say it's a real gas. The key to understanding why gases behave the way they do is to understand the kinetic molecular theory of gases. The kinetic theory of gases states that gases consist of small particles and that these small particles move in straight lines that these small particles are antisocial. They have no attraction or repulsion for, for each other whatsoever. Two, they're very far apart. Key to understanding that, that, that they're very far apart also has to do with the fact that they have a, the gas particles have a very small volume compared to the volume of the container that they occupy. Matter of fact, the volume of a molecule of gas is considered mathematically negligible compared to the volume it moves around in. Think of this. Think of the whatever room you're sitting in right now. That's a huge volume if you're a single molecule of gas. And finally, gas molecules have kinetic energies that increase as temperature increases. What the world is kinetic energy? Kinetic energy is the energy of motion, right? And kinetic energy is a product of mass and velocity. Well, you can't change mass. Therefore, if you're increasing temperature and your kinetic energy is increasing, you must be increasing the velocity at which your gas particles move as you increase temperature. Let me repeat that because this is perhaps the most important part of the kinetic molecular theory as far as we're concerned. As you increase the temperature, you increase the speed at which gas molecules move. There are going to be four fundamental properties that we're going to use to describe gases. We've met three of the four previously, so we'll review them in a second. But let me talk about the new one right now, and that's gas pressure. Pressure is a force applied over an area. The units of pressure are an atmosphere, a millimeter of mercury, which is also called a tor. Millimeter of mercury and a tor are synonyms for each other. In our everyday life, we use units of pounds per square inch to measure units of pressure, right? When you go and check your tire pressure, it's in pounds per square inch, or sometimes it's in PSI, which is pounds per square inch, which is what I said. Um, another unit of pressure um, is the kilopascal, and that's based on your, a, a pascal is based on your um, SI and metric units. However, it's not one that we use commonly in the lab. I re am requiring you to memorize that one atmosphere is equal to 760 millimeters of mercury or 760 tor. Tor and millimeters of mercury are synonyms for each other. An atmosphere is the unit of pressure that is equal to the pressure of the Earth's atmosphere at sea level. And this is a very important, very useful unit to measure pressure in because anytime you want to estimate the pressure of a room on the Earth, you can always estimate it to be 1 atm. For most of you who I'm talking to, you're probably a little bit above sea level. If you're a little bit above sea level, then your pressure in your room is probably going to be 0 0.98 atm instead of 1 atm. But as you can see, you're getting a very good guesstimate if you simply say that the atmospheric pressure at any given time in a room is 1 atm. A quick review. In addition to using pressure to describe the properties of a gas, we also use its volume, its temperature, and its amount. We use this lowercase letter n to represent the amount of a gas. We nearly always use moles to represent the amount of a gas. Matter of fact, for our purposes, we will always use moles to represent the amount of a gas that we have. 
So we use the number of moles, the temperature, the volume, and the pressure to represent the amount of a gas that we have. When you listen to the news forecast, you may hear the term atmospheric pressure. The atmospheric pressure is the pressure exerted by a column of air from the top of Earth's atmosphere to the surface of the Earth. As I already stated, at sea level, the atmospheric pressure has a, has a strength of one atmosphere. Atmospheric pressure changes with altitude, it also changes with the weather. Atmospheric pressure is generally higher on a rainy day and lower on a sunny day. It also decreases with altitude. The higher your altitude, the lower the air pressure. If you think about it simply in the terms of the number of molecules you have stacked on top of you, it makes a lot of sense, right? If you're at a higher elevation, you're further up into the atmosphere and you have less of those molecules smashing down on you. One of the things you may have been wondering when we looked at those units of pressure is where the hell millimeters of mercury came from when it came to determining or measuring atmospheric pressure. The unit of millimeters of mercury or tors is left over from the design of your very early barometers. The very first barometers which are instruments that measure pressure consisted of a glass tube that had all the particles sucked out of it. In other words, you had a glass tube that was vacuumed. One end was closed. The other end, which was opened, was stuck in a big puddle of mercury. The atmosphere, or whatever gas you were measuring, would press down on the pool of mercury and force the mercury up into the glass tube that had no air into it. You would then measure the height of the mercury in the column and that would be your pressure. When you make one of these mercury barometers and expose it to the atmosphere at sea level, your mercury has a height of 76 millimeters of mercury. These are very simple to make and very accurate. If you go into a lot of research labs, despite the fact that mercury will drive you crazy, um, you'll still see them in use. Um, one of the labs that I worked in still had one in use. Uh, it was very accurate, very easy to use. One of the big reasons mercury is used to make barometers is because it's a lot more dense than water. Water has a density of one gram per milliliter, if you remember, way back from the very first chapter of the semester. Because mercury is so dense, it responds much more dramatically to changes in pressure than water does. Water, to get that same effect, would have to be approximately 32 feet or so tall barometer in order to in order to get the same effect as you would from a mercury barometer